So Mark, VPG4 Sensors has been very active in the medical market applications for many years. Specifically for you, this has been your focal point for, for many years. Um, and also to throw in, you and I are getting much older. So I, I think we care a little bit more about some of the applications. Um, your thoughts on this right now? Well, it's a, a fascinating market, Rob, because it, it's so different. And it's in a way, it, it's been um, very predictable, but and then things happen and suddenly you need to rethink the way that you were thinking previously. And as far as medical beds go, uh, you know, load cells can be used to uh, monitor the weight of a patient, for instance, over long term, if they're critical care patients. Um, but also the load cells are used to detect loss of weight. And that is in case someone tries to get out of the bed, uh, sets off an alarm. And some of the more intricate designs will detect a loss of uh, position or a change in center of gravity so that uh, a nurse can be alerted when a person is just starting to make the initial movements to get out of the bed. So uh, really get in there and stop them from even getting uh, partially out of a bed. But what we're seeing recently is the load cells that we put in uh, transport uh, stretchers, which okay. are not used for uh, EMT, but used uh, internal to hospitals. Okay. Right. So um, if you're going to transport a patient, um, you know, certainly use a stretcher. But especially during COVID, we learned that the uh, stretchers can certainly work for uh, short term critical care. And a lot of growth we're seeing is in the uh, surgical center market. Now, surgical centers are going to be more inclined to use stretchers because um, you know, patients are there for a day. Right. They're in for a procedure. They're moved on the stretcher. They come out of their procedure. They're on that stretcher when they're coming out of anesthesia. And that's when a patient wants to um, wake up and you know be disoriented, try to climb out of the stretcher. And that, those same load cells, that same type of system can alert a nurse to say, this guy is trying to get out of the stretcher. He's coming out of an his anesthesia and um, time to get in there and um, get him up and moving. And so he can go home that day. Right. Okay. You know? So it's quick, but it's also accurate, um, as you said, to notify the nurse uh, at the station that something has changed with that patient in that bed. Right. And... Um, you know, it's just the way of the future. I think, you know, surgical centers, certainly, and I had a minor procedure done a number of years ago. And, um, you know, I was glad to go home. Now, granted, I went home and it was on some pain meds, but um, I was in my own bed, right? right? And I was certainly uh, more comfortable and more inclined to uh, get better, feel more comfortable in my own home surroundings. So, um, and, you know, you hate to think of it in terms of, saving money, but it, it is a, a huge savings when a person can get in, get the surgery and go home right? and not be there overnight, right. you know, for the hospital and, and use of a room and uh, use, uh, use of a bed that may be needed for somebody who's there for long-term critical care. Okay. On a much smaller scale, um, we've also seen infant scales, neonatal scales, that also, uh, as I said, I guess, yes, very different than adults, uh, you know, in beds or stretchers. It's important to monitor that, uh, again, particularly in a premature baby that's born and that hopefully gain of weight over a very short period of time. But even worst case, say losing weight, um, that also has become very important, too. It has. And, and we developed a system that uh, weighs uh, critically ill uh, kids right in the crib. Okay. And um, it's a live reading scale. It's not a snapshot because, you know, the kids are so small, uh, particularly the preemies and, and the weight that they're trying to monitor. There's always a concern if, if a nurse pushes a weight button and it takes a snapshot, anything could have been affecting that weight, some outside influence factor. Uh, somebody could have been leaning on it. There could have been an extra blanket in the crib. Yeah. So the live weight reading is uh, a really more accurate way of doing it and um, can, can really 
uh, monitored uh, several places behind the decimal okay. in town. So it's it's really been a way forward for for the kids. All right, patient lift chairs. That also too is something that becomes very beneficial, not only obviously for the patient, but for also a doctor's office or hospital. Where does that come into play? We, we've got a couple of applications for uh, not only patient lifts, and you know a lot of times we'll use a, a basic tension load cell and, and capture the weight, uh, make sure that the lift as well is not being overloaded, but capture a patient's weight when they're being lifted from, from a prone position to an upright position. But we also have uh, systems that go within um, transport chairs, and okay. the transport chairs can align themselves with the bed so it's much easier to trans transfer a patient from a bed to a transport chair, and then the transport chair can take them to a different floor, different location, x-ray, and then be able to bring them right back and get back to that same level and then easily put them back into a bed. So it's... Um, it's it's a it's a it's a pretty clever means of uh, making it easier on the nurses so they're not doing a lot of heavy lifting, yep. and also easier on the patient because they're just gently sliding from one one position to another but not changing their height. Okay. All cancers are very important. Uh, it's always on somebody's mind. You know, somebody in your life, uh, you know, who's unfortunately uh, been impacted by cancer. Specifically with breast cancer awareness, we want to point that out and uh, directly related to mammography machines. And I know something this many years ago when I met you, you were involved in uh, developing a load cell for mammography. Right. Um, a lot of people think of uh, mammography machines and, you know, the use of a load cell for a woman's comfort. And certainly that's important. But generally speaking, a load cell is used to track a patient from follow-up to follow-up to ensure that that platen is being applied in the same force every time to make sure that the films that they're getting are being viewed through the exact same amount of tissue every time. So it, it makes uh, following a patient um, very personal. It, it essentially fines tunes what the, what the radiologist, what the doctor is looking at at those films specific to that patient on a repetitive basis. And that repetitive basis gives you that benchmark over and over every time that you view a film after a mammography, um, after, a, uh, after, the, after the mammogram has been performed. Gotcha. Okay. And I think one last one is infusion pump monitoring. Uh, we've got some blade sensors that, again, uh, VPG4 sensors has had for, uh, I'm thinking, 30, 40 years. Um, how are those used in, what, in that specific application? Yeah, the infusion pump market um, is really relies on a load cell because what happens is that load cell monitors uh, flow rates, how um, much force is being used to compress uh, the, the internal syringe on the infusion pump and can give you a very precise flow rate without ever having the sensor come in contact with, uh, with the, whatever's being uh, pumped in, in the infusion process. Great. Uh, great, fantastic conversation on the medical markets. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, you bet. Thank you.